Hey KBC youth, welcome to our segment dedicated uh, to our theme this fall, which is Stories Matter. This semester, we're going to ex be exploring stories of church members here at KBC and how their stories can inspire and help us connect with others in the world. I'm very excited today to interview our special guest, Kyle Alexander. Kyle has been a member of our church for over 25 years now. It's pretty crazy. He leads children's choir. He plays in the adult handbells and adult choir. And he's also an avid musician and a teacher of music at Rockwood South Middle School. Um, so we're very excited to have him here today. Kyle, thank you so much for talking with us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great. For some of our youth who may not be familiar with you, Kyle, tell us a little bit more about yourself. What brought you to KBC and talk a little bit more about your experience here at the church? Yeah, so what brought me to KBC? My parents, <laughs> uh, <laughs> literally, uh, started attending Sunday school there and church services and you know children's music activities since kindergarten. Um, and my grandparents had gone there beforehand. Actually, interesting story. You all know the White House out back. Uh -huh. uh, my aunt actually lived there for a little while, way back in the day. Oh yeah. My gosh. Did she own so, the house? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got. It? I've been there for a while, um, and I've kind of stuck around in and out, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I did it all. We used to have Wednesday night children's and youth activities um, that all moved to Sunday night um, and so was involved in everything you know mission trips growing up choir tour passport camps yeah. all that stuff yeah since you've been a part of this church's youth group uh, what is one or two things about being in the youth group that was special memorable or important to you I think the most impactful thing that I got from the youth group was a sense of friendship um, and just camaraderie with people who were there for like the same reasons. Um, you know, they didn't all go to my school, so it wasn't like I was trying to really fit in necessarily. Yeah. It was like we all had grown up with each other and we knew what we were doing there and like it was it was a good group cohesion and that's kind of what kept me there for so long I think yeah that's awesome yeah you've been a part of our church for a long time now and now you're a full-time teacher at Rockwood South Middle School so first of all I have to ask how are you holding up as a teacher in the midst of COVID um, I'm doing fine. Okay. I, I think I'm actually doing well, actually. Um, I yeah, am teaching full-time virtually. Our district is still in the process of bringing students back, and there's no real word on when middle school students will be in the building yet. Um, so still all virtual. So that's been interesting, especially teaching orchestra music classes. Um, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I will say it's been it's been a learning curve, and we've gotten into a groove, and it's been real, I guess, heartening to see how these middle schoolers have responded. Because I don't know if I could have done it when I was in middle school. It's crazy, it's crazy. But a lot of them are like stepping up and still learning things and engaged, and that's really really nice to see. Yeah, that's awesome. So what drew you to teaching? Was there some moment or experience in your life that drew you towards this specific profession? Hmm. Uh, um, I do come from a long, not long, but a lineage of teachers on my mom's side. Um, her mom was a teacher, her dad taught college courses um, after he left uh, the military um, and so I think even my grandma's mom was a teacher you know, old school 
old school schoolhouse ring the bell everyone come on in yeah one room schoolhouse sort of thing so it i guess it's in my blood um but I, it's it's never something that i really truly thought growing up at least that i would do um it wasn't until i had kind of really kind of settled that i wanted to do something with music I was like, I don't know if I have the patience and the stamina and the drive to like be a professional musician. <laughs> um, and I had just recently been accepted at William Jewell College into the uh, prior leadership program. And truthfully, until that point, I had never really seen myself as like a leader either. Um, I had never really tapped into those kind of leadership qualities before. Um, so then starting this course in college, um, deciding that you know performance wasn't necessarily going to be my thing i was like i think i think i can do i think i can teach for sure i think i could even maybe teach music um, and i've been really lucky to have a lot of great outstanding um, role models in that field growing up um, so it's it's been nice i have even gotten to work with a few of my former teachers now which is that's cool. been interesting <laughs> I enjoyed it, but still intimidating for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, lots of good mentors in my life that kind of guided me to this path. Wait, so did you go to Rockwell Middle School South? No, no. I, uh, I went to Parkway, okay. Parkway School District. Got it. Okay. Yeah. How has your faith as a Christian impacted the way that you care for your students and how you teach as a teacher? Um, I think... First and foremost, um, my faith and what I've learned and just gathered from even, you know, individuals at KBC throughout my life has uh, been to lead with compassion and empathy. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to really focus on my individual students and being able to meet them where they are and help guide them through certain things in their lives that might not even apply to my class. Like, you know, there are so many other things that kids are dealing with these days and just being able to be that voice or that guiding hand has been uh, something that I really enjoy um, as a teacher. Um, because a lot of what teaching is, is simply guiding and like being there. Yeah. Um, of course you want to get to the content, but it's easier to do that when you have a strong relationship with kids with students that's huge and finally the last question i ask our guests is if there's anything from their story uh, that they want to share specifically like a takeaway for our students um, and i was thinking in particular you grew up in the youth group here at the church uh, you're a teacher in middle school now what's something from your story that you wish someone in your position shared with you when you were in middle school and high school uh, that might have helped you or encouraged you or inspired you in a certain way? Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> what is something? Um, I, I, I'm not sure, quite sure this totally relates. It's okay. It, it kind of does. I, I can... I can I'll figure it out. Don't worry. I'm just going to start talking. Um, <laughs> I can always edit things out. Uh, I think one thing that would have been like really helpful for me, especially growing up and even into college and after college, is that you, you don't have to have everything figured out. Mm. And it's okay to have questions and it's okay to have doubts about things. And the important thing is to be able to ask those questions and be able to raise your voice um, because when you don't and when you feel like there's not someone you can talk to and go to with these sorts of things you know heavier deeper issues it gets really heavy you know it, you know it weighs on you and so having those people in your life that you can go to and have honest conversations with um, that's something that I know I did have in middle school and in high school, but I don't think I realized it at the time. Um, so looking back, 
it's easy to pinpoint those people that I could have gone to, but yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. You yeah. know, everything's fine. Yeah. I yeah. Think, I think and, that's... And it's okay to think those things too. And it's okay to not find your people right away. Yeah. But be looking for them and be open. Yeah. That's awesome. And Kyle, I can't thank you again for joining us. It's been awesome that you've been able to share your story. It truly has been a pleasure. You too. Thanks, Taylor.